I think it's a record about the power of song to tell a story that's almost impossible to tell without melody. There's things that happen uh, to, uh, to people that there's no words for. And melody can just explain it in the most simple way, and we understand each other. Uh, songs are incredibly powerful vehicles to get you into another person's heart. It's the 11th of November down in Nashville, Tennessee. Free breakfast at the Waffle House If I show my ID A parade up on the riverfront You can hear the trumpets play Hands on hearts, the color guard Kicks it off on Veterans Day For me, art is to, um, to tell truths that are hard to tell. Either sorrowful truths or joyful truths. Music touches everyone, um, whether it's a slow song, fast song. Um, so there's always going to be that passion for music and music that touches people, whether bringing out tears or, or laughter. So there's always going to be a place for that. The power of this work is, is the relationships I've developed with the veterans I've written with. And we've become close. I've, I, I've got this collection of, of new friends that I cherish so deeply. Um, the relationships are strong and real, and they mean a lot to me. You make connections. It's not just a social thing. It's not just, yeah, they were nice people. It's, it's a true, honest connection. and. It's kind of like the bonds we form in the military. You know, when you're put into an, ex like an extreme, extraordinary circumstance, those bonds, I think, are just forged a little tighter. And with the participants and everybody opening up, it's just more intense than you bond. And then especially when you're sitting with the songwriter, you, you definitely get that bond because you're, you're basically reliving with that person all your worst moments or, or your best moments, depending on what you're talking about. So they're getting to see your worst, your best. So you kind of, I don't know, you feel like you've known them forever because they know everything about you. The whole process started by uh, uh, an invitation from Darden Smith, the founder of Songwriting with Soldiers, uh, to me to come be a part of a veterans retreat. He created this beautiful, beautiful program uh, that is funded through outside sponsorship and uh, some USO grants. Uh, corporate sponsorship, uh, individual donations. Uh, and the way it works is 15 soldiers and their wives oftentimes, sometimes all female uh, retreats, uh, but 15 uh, people who've served uh, and four songwriters go to a retreat center. Uh, and for two and a half days, all we do is work. We just write songs and we emerge with a song from everyone's experience. So we've got at least 15 songs, usually more like 20 in two days. I think this program is like no other. Um, the approach is a little bit different. The audience is a little bit smaller, so the, uh, the extent to which you're working with participants one-on-one -on -one is, for me, mind-boggling in a good way. Songwriting and Soldiers has definitely reinstilled my pride in being a, a soldier. It's let me feel welcomed and appreciated by the civilian side. I think it's helped me heal and be more honest with myself so I can be more honest with my fellow service members. I was at a place when I, when I got here, I was pretty close to suicide. I mean, I knew what I was going to do, where I was going to do it, what day I was going to do it. And the session that I had where I was able to tell Mary, who I wrote with, things that I've, no one on this planet knows. I think then once I got everything out, 
and saw her reaction, that helped a lot. But then after the fact, once the song was done and people heard it and I had people come up to me and talk to me about how it related to them or how they thought maybe they were the only one that felt that way and the, that they heard it. They're like, man, that's pretty cool. I, I really thought I was the only one or I don't know, just, I think that's what kind of motivates me to keep going is just seeing how out of what you might think are the worst things in this that this world has to offer, you can bring hope and strength and so much good to all these other people from such a horrible, rotten thing. And I think that once I kind of saw that, things changed. Looking back now, who the hell knows where the soul of a dead soldier goes? Guardian angels, maybe they're true. My guardian angels. I shouldn't be here You shouldn't be gone But it's not up to me Who dies and who carries on I sit in my room I close my eyes Me and my guardian Still on the ride. I think that's what's important uh, about uh, uh, the the work that Songwriting with Soldiers does. It gets the stories from people who've served and puts them in a in a way that everyone can understand, and then serves them back, so that we can see what these men and women have sacrificed and what their service means. We can see it. We can understand it now. It's, it's been made uh, clear for anyone who cares to listen, to, to feel it, not just see it, but to, to be in it almost. The empathy is created with a, a, a good song. There's very much a translation component to writing with someone and getting their story into the song. I, I try to keep myself out of it. I listen to their experience. I, I listen to their to their uh, to the words they can say and to, to the to the words they can't say, I watch their face, I watch their body, and I transcribe and translate their experience, uh, and then I run it by them. And if it's not right, we get it right. I keep going and ask them to point out what what doesn't feel true and right. And we keep going back over it and back over it until until they nod and I can see they're there. It, it, we got it. It's, a, it's almost so frustrating if you're, if you're willing to forgive someone and they can't forgive yeah, themselves. Yeah, that's what he said. That's that's like, he's always like, I can't forgive myself. Like, he came home and he looked at me and he goes, I never listened to you. I'm like, no, you have never listened to me and I'm right, you know? <laughs> I mean, like, the same things, like, these people put me and he's like, I know you've said it a hundred times. I'm like, he was, in such, he was in such a bad way last yeah. week um, that he... Um, for, for once, he usually takes his gun when he goes hiking, but he didn't take it this time. He took the dog. They, they want the water to go away. They want to go away. They want us to not hurt. It's too uncomfortable yeah, for them. Be done with it. We're out of there now. Yeah. I love that idea. We're soldiers, too. Like, you're soldiers of your own war. Yes. Like, you're soldiers of the other war. Yes. Oh. I don't know the whole myth, but I read this in a military like spouse book once. It's this myth that military spouses are always walking with the the awareness that that the worst is going to happen, mm -hmm. and for us, like the worst that was going to happen was they were going to be killed in action, and we never imagined, and that was the sort of Damocles when they were deployed, and mm -hmm. we could never imagine that the sort of Damocles, the thing that was going to kill us, was them coming back. I told the kids it took me a long time to like understand that it's like that sense of loss, mm -hmm. like you know. Yeah. Like, and then I just thought of this thing. I got a landmine. No, there's landmines in our living rooms. And high, high, high. people looking at him and thinking.
him for the sacrifice he made. They look at well, I could be me. like a whole second verse too. I love all that stuff. People look at him and thank him for the sacrifice. That's he the made. second That's verse. That's the second yeah. verse. So we, we don't lose that at all. Um, they look at me and smile and say, "I'm lucky. He's okay." That's a very Perfect. good. But yeah, because that. And it is. War after the war. My whole thing has always been, I think that every service member, every veteran deserves to have this chance. And if I can do anything to help that or make that happen, that's what I'm trying to do. It showed me that there are people that aren't in the service that actually really are concerned with a lot of veterans' problems and a lot of people that are suffering from the horrible things that we've experienced and we're trying to transform that into something good. If we just take a step back and uh, give the process or give it a chance, uh, the end result uh, can be amazing. So what I learned from that retreat three and a half years ago um, has helped me in my marriage, helped me in my professional life. Um, it's, I can't even quantify it. It's been that, that powerful. I think that the songs do make them uh, more visible. I mean, this is women and men you went to high school with. They're, they're everyday people who, who got um, uh, uh, into the situation for a variety of reasons, but they're no different than you or I. Uh, they just had to rise to the occasion, uh, and they uh, uh, experience love and life and relationships and travel just like anybody would, uh, and their stories are, are no different than our stories. And so the songs let you see into their hearts so you can see yourself and you realize, oh my God, it's, it's just like my marriage. It's just, it's just like my experience with my, my friends. I, I think... I think that that's the great thing about empathy, and, and empathy and, and great songs are, are uh, inseparable. Rivals and rosary beads, you hold on to what you need, Vicodin more. Rifles, rolls, beads. White knuckles wrapped around Blackness that has no sound Bombed out schools and homes Kids in the street alone
so not carrying the heartache around is, is big for me. I've been able to let that go. If it's something that starts festering, I talk about it then and there. I don't carry it with me and explode six months down the road. It's one thing to talk to another veteran, another service member, and they always are going to get it. Whether they agree or not, they're going to kind of understand where you're coming from. But I think with a lot of us, our fears is, like I said, the what are the normal people going to think if they hear what we did and what happened? And to kind of have all that just in a week and gone, like you don't have to be afraid of people want to hear it. And then what can you do from, like I said, take that all that horrible stuff and turn it into something that can motivate, help, hope. A young woman who was in the Marines was having a hard time, a real hard time at the retreat. Uh, and she, at a certain point in, in, in the gathering, went to the bathroom and was crying. And I went to the bathroom and put my arm around her and sat with her and she was able to lean into me. And I realized, oh my God, I'm, I'm in my 50s, she's in her 20s, I'm, I'm, I'm maternal. I am a, I'm a much older woman and I'm representing something maternal here and I can do this, I, I can be leaned into. I'm not, I'm not afraid of her trauma. I can, I can offer her a shoulder. Uh, and I, I didn't ask her to talk or to, to articulate it. I just let her, or, or encourage her just to lean into me, and she did. Uh, and then she walked up to me with a, a napkin folded over uh, a, a, after a, a while, uh, after we were in the bathroom, and, and, and she wept. And the napkin, I opened it up, and she had written in a, in a Sharpie, I'm fighting for my country's freedom, but I don't feel free. Um, she, had, she had experienced um, sexual trauma in combat. Uh, she was raped by a fellow soldier, and, and she was devastated. Uh, and it was then that I knew sometimes a woman is exactly right for this job. And this woman, I, I can do this. I can sit with her. And, and we wrote an incredibly beautiful song after she handed me that, that napkin. And um, I think that uh, moment after moment, I, I realize they're terrified of their, of, of oftentimes of, of the amount of pain that they carry. Maybe it was partially, I was afraid that maybe they would see what I saw in myself. They would think about me, how I felt about myself. Um, I guess, uh, I guess it comes down to the connections and if, I guess it was the fear of not being able to make those connections with people if, and if you did, it wasn't true or honest because you're not yourself. And it's like, so you're, you're, you battle with that. Do I hide it and fake it and put on a smile and, but then go home and be miserable and no one knows or just be honest? and wait and see what happens, and I was honest, and for me, it worked out great. I was bound to something bigger and more important than a single human life. I wore my uniform with honor My service was not a sacrifice The willingness of, of these men and women, most of them young, to be of absolute service, um, that, that is an incredible thing to, to sit with someone who's willing to die for what they believe in. Uh, and what they believe in is not necessarily uh, this ideal of America. They believe in the person to their left and the person to their right. Uh, and they put themselves on the line for their brothers and sisters. And it's powerful. The patriotism I'm talking about and what I witnessed was more of the heart again. It wasn't for an idea. It, it, was, it was for the love of my fellow soldiers. It's a spiritual type patriotism. It's a willingness to put my life on the line for the people that I'm in service with. You don't fight for yourself.
you fight for the ones by your side And they do the same for you And to live you must be willing to die Hopefully with the work that we do with songwriting with soldiers, this collection of songs, my hope and my goal, and I believe that I did tell the whole truth, um, not, not just part of it. They say no man's left behind, but that ain't true. They hate it that they need us, but they do They lose their fingers, lose their limbs We try to love them back together again They say no man's left behind, but that ain't true And they're hurting places that the eye can't see We miss the man our husband used to be Military breaks their heart We're there when they fall apart They're hurting places that the eye can't see And we're strong 